WPF is a technology which enables you to make Windows applications that can be installed on Windows computers and look like, say, Microsoft Word. Windows Forms was the old way to make Windows applications. Today, you want to use WPF. In this lesson, I show you how to create a simple WPF application, publish it as an .exe file, and install it. So this is the application that we're going to make. It has a little icon. It's a calculator. You type in two numbers, click Calculate, and it calculates it. Click Close, and it closes. So to create this application, go ahead and start Visual Studio, New Project, WPF application, let's call it Calculator 3. And since the designer in 2010 and Visual Studio 2010 is quite nice, you can just start dragging things. A text box, a label, let's make the label a plus. Put it up here. And another text box, we'll put it here. And we can align things like this or with the arrow keys. Then we need a button. We'll put it here, make it a nice big button. We want it to say calculate. We want to resize this a bit. So we'll just click here. Then we need a place to display. We'll use a text block. Let's go ahead and make that the bigger font like we had it. Oh, maybe 36 or so. Let's make it empty. So like this, make it a little bit bigger like that. And then we had a ellipse. Where is an ellipse here? Let's make it kind of round. I'll put that right here and expand things. As you can see this is quite, quite flexible. It's pretty much what you see is what you get, which is nice. And we need a label for our button. Drag the label there, and the label says close. We can move it around with the mouse right in the middle or so. Move it up with the arrow keys. So let's make it functional. We need to give some names to the text boxes, and let's do this in XAML. Just to get some experience with XAML, here's the name. We'll call it number one. Here's the next text box here, number two. And text block is, we'll call it answer. We can switch back to design. Now we're on the button here. We can click on events, go to the click event, double click it, and we're in the click handler. We'll say integer number one equals and then what we called the first text box, that was number one text. Now, of course, that's not going to work because this is an integer and this is a string, so we have to convert it. No problem. Convert to integer 32. And that is uh, number one text. So that should be all right. But it didn't give me the capital. Okay. Ah. Okay. And then we'll do control C, control V here, number two, from number two text, which is also fine. And then we need the sum, integer sum equals number one plus number two. Very straightforward. And then we need to fill the text blocks that we made, which we called answer. So answer text equals the sum, which is an integer to string, which will be a string, and we're finished. Let's see if that works. Three, three, four, four, yes, good. Now we need to make this close the application. The reason is we want to make this a bit more newfangled design, WPF, so I'm going to close this and make that border not appear. The way we do that is we go to design mode here, make sure we're on the window, and find at the bottom the window style. Click it and change it to none. When you run it now, you see that there is nothing there, and the only way to stop it currently is to close the window like this. So what we're going to do now is 
make a click on this ellipse be handled. Now it's not a button, so it doesn't have a click event, but we can click on it here and it needs to have a fill. So let's just make it some kind of color for now, like this. And then we select it and we say events. And as I said, we don't have a click, but we do have a mouse down, which is the same thing. So double click on that and then type in the magic incantation to close the application. Application current shutdown. Everything is handled here. It goes true, so that's fine. Now it should work as well. We should have all of our functionality here. 34 plus 4 is 38, and we can close. Very nice. It would be even nicer if when we moused over that, if there was a cursor, which was a hand. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we can run it again. And we have 34 and 2 is 36. And very nice. We can close it. So that's the functionality. So now let's give it some WPF pizzazz. I've got Expression Blend installed here. It's not a free piece of software, and there's no Express version of Expression Blend. But if you have it, you can do gradients, etc., in this designer, and then copy them out in XAML. And that's what I want to show you now. So let's do the background of our application first. It's basically a rectangle. These are the colors that we basically want. We can change them. So let's get a nice color here, and then we can do a different kind of gradient, which would be here. We get a little arrow, and we can say, I want my uh, blue to start over here, and I want it to go just like that. That'll be a nice one. And then you click here on, and here's the magic, XAML, and copy this linear gradient brush out, Control-C, which contains all the information about that gradient. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And although that was, let me look at that again. Although that was a gradient of a rectangle, we're going to copy it into our window. So let's go into our XAML. In our window element, we'll say window, background, and copy. Control V. And as you see, it's already of that gradient. Let's do the same thing to the button. Go into blend, go to design, and change it to ellipse. It doesn't have to be the exact size, it just needs to get the idea of the gradient. So let's go ahead and click on it. Here we go. And let's go ahead and turn that around by clicking on the arrow here. We'll move this way over here. Move this way up here. Move this here so that we have just the right gradient that we want. It looks like there's some light shining on it. And click on XAML. Go down here. And because I do actually have an ellipse in my application, I'm going to copy the ellipse fill. So I'll do a Control C. Go back to Visual Studio. And go into my XAML, find my ellipse, there it is, go to the end with end, open up the element, and copy in the fill, control V. And when I do that, you see that it doesn't affect anything because in my ellipse I have a fill here. When I take it out, then it'll take the internal fill, and it does. So let's run that. And there's our application. Let's see if it still works. 34 and 3 is 37, and it looks very nice. So now let's publish it. What we want to do is create a exe file that we can zip up and, for instance, put on our website so people can download it and install it on their Windows computers. So the first thing I want to do is to change the icon. Yeah, you just have to click here, icon. I had an icon around here somewhere, icons, and it's a nice calculator. It's an ICO file. You can get those from the web. And then we want to go up here to Project and Publish, Calculator 3. Where do we want to publish it to? If we're just going to install it on computers, just some directory. So Test 4, for instance. 
open and next and the cd-rom and dvd-rom is the correct one don't check for updates for now and we're finished so there we have it and we can close our visual studio and now we have this test four here so let's you know call it calculator and zip it for instance so we'll zip it send to compress so now it's a calculator zip let's say we put that on our website we'll just pretend somebody downloads it into a totally different directory on uh, test four and they download it and there it is they unzip it extract all yes so here it is extracted and they go in here and they install it it installs it says it hasn't been signed but they know you so they install and there they have it let's see if it works 33 plus 4 is 37 and they can close it and you see that it's installed as a application like any other application if we right click here we're in windows 7 pin to taskbar then it's in the taskbar and appears very nicely when we click the icon in this lesson you saw how easy it is to create a simple interactive wpf application which has a design that, with WinForms, used to be very difficult to achieve. You also saw that by using Expression Blend, you can very easily and visually create gradients and then just copy the XAML text, which represents those gradients, into Visual Studio. And you saw how easy it is to package your application into a file that can be downloaded from the internet and installed on any Windows computer. I hope this example convinces you that WPF is a very exciting technology to create applications with C-Sharp.